it appears from that reading that we don't have that much power. And what the problem is, is that we don't have enough water. And there's a reason for that, which is that these springs aren't flowing the way they used to in Colorado. And that has something to do with, um, I believe, climate change. But uh, it's a long drought that's been going on here in Colorado. And uh, so I'm going to have to figure out a new solution on the water power because this is the season when I would have the most power uh, from the water. But this year, it's just not enough to even keep the system running that well. Water from this area used to come down into my springs where I brought it down and made power. Now I'm looking to gather a far more reliable source, which is this whole area up here, which is largely wilderness area, where water comes down through this creek here, and then we'll go down into the pipeline, go down through the pipeline, make power, and go to the house. <laughs> That is why I don't want to live on gasoline. All that noise and problem. So we're going to go through a process of uh, creating a new power system with the same equipment. And uh, it's going to be a long process. Hopefully I'll get it all done uh, this year and hope to document it all and uh, First thing we're going to do is go start measuring altitude. So this is springtime up here, and uh, the flows are way below what they normally are. But this is a water source that's going to be much more effective for me to have a hydro system on because there's so much water. Even you know, in the dry season, there's a lot of water, and the head or the distance of drop isn't anywhere near as much, but uh, there's going to be plenty of power available here. But I'm going to have to measure the height and the head to figure out how much power I can use. And that's what this process of this video is going to be about. So you can see that there's quite a bit of uh, snags and fall and stuff going on here with the water course. It changes quite a bit through the year, and uh, what happens is there's a big spring melt, and the volume of the water is just huge. It pushes rocks and boulders and all kinds of stuff down. It creates difficulty in terms of trying to get a really clean uh, feed into a power line. This other side of the hill over here is so steep I can't really work across it in terms of laying a pipeline across that very effectively because the trees will all come down on it. And uh, so my plan is to divert some of this water. I don't need all of it. Uh, and in the, in the uh, dry times of year, I certainly don't want to take all the water out of it because that's going to harm the wildlife that lives in the water. And it depends on the water. So I'm just going to take some of it. That's so my plan is over on the creek over there that runs down through there to divert some of that water into this meadow and create a marshland sort of settlement area over in here and the water will filter out through these this marshland here into a very languid flow and then go into a collection weir here where I can filter everything out of it. So this is where the water comes down from the meadow and comes through this small little area here to join the creek over here, which uh, is actually very active at times and a dangerous place to try to pull water from. So I'm not really concerned about any impact I'm going to have on the environment here because the only area is from up here where the water comes out of the meadow over to right where it joins the stream. It's not going to impact the wildlife at all. There's no fish in this. So I will do no harm to the environment. And that's a basic tenet of microhydro. And my plan is to pull out about 300 gallons a minute. That's the maximum that my 
current turbine that I'm using on the springs will allow me to take. So that's uh, what I'm hoping to maximize the system out at. And uh, to see how much power 300 gallons a minute will create, I have to figure out how much of a drop I have. So I've got this little watch here to just do a general idea on it. And you can just basically, you can get one of these things for, oh, maybe a hundred bucks on eBay or less if it's used or something. It's reading 8,400 feet, and I know that the elevation is higher than that, so it's not that all, all that accurate of a device. But it's going to give me a rough idea of how much altitude I do have from this point down to where I plan to put the powerhouse. So there's the creek over in the distance there, and this is going to be the site for the new powerhouse right in here. And this huge rock over here has been sitting there for a long time. A lot longer than the big white tuna sitting over there. And uh, it is a good site for the powerhouse because if there's ever a massive flood, which is possible, you never know, that rock will divert whatever water flow is coming down and protect the powerhouse. Now the power is going to have to run all the way over there, up the hill, and that's about 11 or 1200 feet. And so we're going to have to worry about transmission issues as well. So there it says 8180, and quite a bit of time has passed since the previous reading the temperature has changed and probably the barometric pressure has changed a little bit too so these readings cannot be super accurate uh, they just give you a general idea of what might be there for you in terms of power here's a far more accurate method of doing this take a carpenter's square and thread a quarter inch hole so you can mount it on a tripod and then you'll have a simple homemade surveyor's tool to be able to make measurements on the hillside.